Today's date is 4-7-2018. Uh, We're here in Evansville, Indiana at the Red Cross. We have two visitors here. This is an honor flight that's going to go out on May 5th, 2018 to Washington, D.C. and take these individuals to the uh, World War II memory, the uh, Korean War and the Vietnam uh, keepsake, and also the Arlington Cemetery in Washington, D.C. area. We're lucky to have here Emil Tyler, uh, Navy, and five years in Navy, and his niece, uh, Mrs. Bone, and she's here from Union, uh, Missouri. Mr. Emil Tyler is from Mount Carmel, Illinois. That's uh, about 25 miles west of Evansville, Indiana, west of Princeton um, or so. And Emil, you're going to tell us uh, your birth date, and then we'll work our way through your chronology of why you got into service, where you enlisted, where you did basic, and then what you did. So, Emo Tyler. My uh, birth date is September the 5th, 1930. And I enlisted at, uh, and signed up with a recruiting officer in Evansville, and they sent me to Louisville, Kentucky for my physical, and then they swore sin and put me on a train, a steam engine, and went all the way to California instead of the Great Lakes, I don't know why. Uh, it took five days to get there, and uh, quite a trip. But we had a Pullman, a Navy first class. They gave us the very top and had a, our own Pullman to take care of us. Uh, I'm poor to take care of us. And you went all the way to Naval Training Center in that San Diego? And in started. San Diego, California, and went to the boot, through boot camp, and then went home on leave, because they'd make you do it for two weeks, and then you go back to San Diego, what year was this that you went out to? 1948. 48. And then I went, they sent me, of all places, back to Memphis Naval Station at Memphis, Tennessee. Well, it's actually at Millington. Millington, Millington yes. And, and, uh, but that's a little town. And that made me travel again from one coast, almost halfway again. And I was there and went to Airman School. So not, not to be a pilot, but just to be a, an airman in the Navy Air Force at that time. So they had like two, two things, you know. Yes. Uh, the Air Force was sort of, uh, well, they had different uh, stripes on their shirt for one thing. They had green ones and the red ones had whites. And uh, anyway, I went to school there and then I went, my first billet was back to California to Alameda. Uh, well, that's right that, south of Oakland in Alameda uh, Air right Base. On, uh, I was stationed yeah. right by there for years. Yeah, that's yeah. right next to the bay there. In yes. fact, you go under, go under a tunnel to get there. Yes. And uh, Alameda Air Base had airplanes there and, and uh, sh carriers there, lots of ships. Oh, they had all kinds of ships there. And they, uh, we, uh, the first, that was, uh, uh, squadron was 154. I remember that. We had fighter pilots, uh, fighter planes. And then we got rid of the Bearcats, and then they, we had TBMs and TBS. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to several bases while I was there. I mean, kept moving me, you know. And ended up down at uh, in California, was at uh, Moffett Field. Moffett Field was right in the Bay Area, but it was right south of south. there. And they did blimps there. They did a lot of big aircraft in the peak yeah. and did the uh, submarine watchers. Uh, yeah. The uh, blimps were gone when yeah. I was there, but the hangers were, and they are huge. Gigantic. They still have the Fuji blimp that stays there once in a while. But <laughs> yeah. they're still there, some of those hangers. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And it's the only uh, other side of the San Francisco Bay. It's south of San Francisco, about 25 miles. Yeah. And then I went and uh, got transferred again. They, our whole squadron went, to, they sent us all to the East Coast, the Atlantic Coast, at uh, what they call uh, Breezy Point. Uh, it's right at, at Norfolk, but that's what they call a place, the air, airstrip we went yes. to. And I was there for the rest of my duration, uh, which was uh, ended up being five years long because the war come along and my enlistment was up. And they said I had an essential rate. I don't know what that means, but it meant two more years in the Navy. <laughs> I'll put it that way. and uh, But it was okay, too. And tell us how you train people. You did a lot of training for people. Tell us how essential that was, well, and give me a, uh, examples it, of that. It, I'll tell you, it was uh, it was all secret. Mm -hmm. 
I, we was trained to uh, load uh, the, the bombs, I'll put it that way. And uh, Nuclear bombs? Yes. Some yes. nuclear, so you're trained, you're not allowed to talk about it, but you were, At now that you time, could, uh, couldn't say anything, but it was nuclear when, bombs you put on the bottom of oh, big I airplanes. I about it now, but yeah. when they, I got out, they made me sign a paper I couldn't tell my wife even about for 10 years. Yes. yes. So. Uh, top they, secret. Uh, yes. I was there. Yeah, I had a top secret. Uh, clearance and Marines guarded us where we was working in a compound with, with machine gun towers. Now, I'm not, that's How big the bombs was. were they? Were they real uh, big? About uh, 500 pounders? the uh, same kind that uh, dropped the old Hiroshima. Hiroshima. So uh, like Big Boy and Fat man. Boy? Uh, yeah. And they put on back of what type of plane? On the bottom of what type uh, of plane? We had uh, P2Vs uh, bombers. Yeah. And they had a huge bomb bay on them. Yes. And then we got the J. They wouldn't detonate them, or they wouldn't activate them. Nothing oh, no, was activated. It, it they was do just that a on, fake bomb. Yeah, you yeah. Know, just for training. Training purposes. and drop them out in the ocean on islands. Yeah. And would you go down to the uh, Caribbean to practice, or where would they we, practice? We went down to uh, sent them to Cuba one time. Yes. To practice, and uh, they shipped uh, air. Uh, uh, their carrier would come down, and their planes would fly down, and then we'd go to sea long enough to do. You know, maneuvers and have them train the pilots to, you know, for landing and taking off. Were they pretty and, accurate with those bombs? Did you oh, watch them? Oh, yeah. They hit a hit a hit a ten foot square out in the ocean or yeah, somewhere. Yeah, uh, they're pretty accurate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, we and uh, that on that coast, and I uh, them and they'd send me on uh, where they take me and maybe a chief and a couple more of us that was trained in this stuff. They'd send us clear back to California. To another ship to train them how to load them bombs. See, also is that out of ships, San Diego? Train them to. Well, we know we let we uh, we got to Long Beach, and then they put us on a seaplane with the with our plane on there, just one plane, and took it all up to Seattle <laughs> along the coast, unload that and the plane so we could train their men because the, the ship was in dry dock at the yes. time. But they would just want big to carrier and dry dock. Yeah. To, yeah, how to uh, yeah. load them things. Yeah. Like. It was a very important part of the war. And, and, so uh, anyway, that's uh, I spent the last three years uh, in that in that doing that. You know what I mean? Uh, training other people how to load these bombs and stuff. Well, that's very interesting. Well, that was during the Cold War, and the Cold War lasted all the way to 1989. So yeah. we didn't use a lot of those uh, nuclear things during Vietnam or even during Korea, but we were ready for uh, Khrushchev and the Russians all the way to 1989, so probably a lot of the techniques you use are s still in effect to some degree. There are probably some minor, minor changes, but not a lot. How much of a hoist did you have to raise those bombs? Did you have a lot of machines to help with that? Uh, Two or three people, or did you have a... Uh, on, uh, uh, on shore, when we was doing it just for practice, uh, they just planned the plane out there and put a curtain all the way around it, and they just uh, have a they had a big... Uh, Huge, uh, I'll call it a real big wrecker. Yes. And they'd lift it up and put it on a trailer, and then we'd slide it under the plane, and then uh, well, it had its own voice like that. I see, it had its own voice. And, and yeah. then uh, it also had a shackle. That it just held, hung, hung by one shackle, believe it or not. And But it had to be torqued up to a large pound with a spring, so when they pushed the button to drop it, it actually kicked it out of that bomb bay. Yes. Because it had to clear that bomb bay or you're going to be in trouble. You know, because it's so big. It just if it got go stuck in there, they'd be in yeah, trouble. That's right. That, that's really happened, too. Close. Yeah. You were right. yeah. And uh, it's quite interesting. And then you got out of the Navy and then came back here to to, to Mount Carmel, and what did you do with your life? When I, when I took, come back, went to work for the New York Central Railroad and uh, worked there for 11 years until the when uh, I was an electrician, I took a, a what they call an apprenticeship and made, uh, you know, carried a card. And uh, then they uh, railroad the diesels came. See, when I went to no, the rounders, it's all the all steam. Like you went back, then it's all steam, and then then we got all the rounders losing all the rounders because we we became. Uh, it became not rounders, it, it because uh, diesel came in That's in the right. 50s. You saw that changeover. A changeover, and then they they laid off hundreds of men when that come because it didn't take. Didn't need anybody. They, well, no, they made the parts for the steam engines, yeah. but they bought them for the yeah. just buy them for the diesel, see, yeah. and that made a difference. And uh, so then uh, when they closed it down there, they gave me a couple of places I could have gone and held on my uh, 
uh, seniority. Yes. And but one of them was Chicago, and I forget where the other one was. Said no way. And there was no way this country boy was going to go to Chicago. So you stayed there in Mount Carmel. Stayed in yeah. Mount Carmel, worked for different places there yeah. as an electrician. Yeah. And uh, retired. And uh, when I retired, was when I was 62 years old, and I never regret that one bit. Yeah. And, well, I'm glad you got to talk to us today, Emma. We'll make a copy of this and mail it to you. I'll get your address. And Miss Bone, do you have anything to add to this? You were his niece and saw all this happen. Do you have anything to add? No, you're fine right there. Anything that you should add about these things? Oh, no. Okay. Because I was. You were around, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for bringing him here today. You're going to take him to Washington, D.C. And thank you for doing that. It's going to be a fun trip. I've gone on it. You'll be amazed at all you see. Thank you for your. Thank you for your service, Emil. Appreciate okay. it. Emil, tell us how much rank you got and how long a time. I got I'm the Loud. aviation ordinance first class petty officer in four years. That's unbelievable. It Nobody unbelievable. does that. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and I, I had one guy, the uh, officer, tried to gig me for because I didn't have my hash mark on, and I didn't. I told him I said I got. I, I don't have one. I'm not entitled to one. He said, oh. <laughs> but, but that's a lot of advancement. First class in four years, you never get that. Nobody gets that. That's not amazing. Yes, it's war time. No. I mean, really yeah. time. Yeah. Well, thanks again for your interview. Thank you for your service. Okay. Thank you. Okay.